recognizing that we are all living in a very challenging time where many are ill, tensions are rather high, and fear seems to be the name of the game. Several Austin churches would like to invite you into a time of reflection and prayer. So please join us as we pray for our community, for health, for each of you, and that God's love be visible in our world. Spirit of life and source of healing, turn our fear into loving kindness, send strength and courage to healthcare workers, knowledge and insight to scientists, humility and wisdom to public leaders, creativity and levity to parents and educators, and patience, patience to all of us. Embolden our strong to watch out for our weak, our young to take care of our old, Help us each to do our part. Help us to see that we are one world, one community, one people united in your spirit, that our lives are interconnected and interwoven. Amen. Hi, I'm Mark Van House, senior pastor at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. I was born and raised right here in Austin. Our city has faced challenges before, floods, tornadoes, and the flu pandemic of 1918 to 1920. Through all of these, we came through together. We pray for you and your families that this word of hope will be true because we believe in the words of St. Paul that neither death nor life nor anything else in all of God's creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. I pray you believe this promise. We really are in this together, and we'll come through this together. Hear the words of the prophet Micah. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Love Greetings, Pastor Sherry Mason from the Congregational Church, and it is an honor to be with you and share these prayers of healing. I begin with the poet Rumi, who wrote these words. Even if from the sky, Poison befalls all. I am still sweetness, wrapped in sweetness, wrapped in sweetness, wrapped in sweetness. End of quote. There is ordinary hope and mystical hope. Ordinary hope comes with conditions. Life will be better when we can return to church. Life will be better when we no longer speak of face mask. Ordinary hope life will be better when mystical hope has no conditions as in the poem mystical hope is not based on external circumstances it is based on the promise that we are wrapped in sweetness those times when social distancing creates loneliness or fear our mystical hope is in a god who promises that we are never never alone Thank you, God, for wrapping us in the sweetness of your presence, in the promise that neither viruses nor social distancing will separate us from your eternal peace and love. Amen. Hello, I am Father John Sullivan. Greetings to you and peace from Christ Church, the Episcopal Church here in Austin, Minnesota. During this time of uncertainty and doubt, I trust that we can lean upon those lessons from our faith, that God is always rich in mercy, that God is all love and compassion, that God is with us in and through the darkest of times. In the Psalms, we find passages that strengthen our hope, like this passage from Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. These are the passages from Holy Scripture that can shore up our faith and bring us a sense of God's comforting presence in trying times. My prayer for all of us is that when we find ourselves down or facing difficult days, that we will turn our hearts to God and find consolation and rest. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us this day and forever. Amen. 
Hi, this is Pastor Patrick Zims from Grace Lutheran Church here in Austin. I'm reminded of the story of when I uh, was sailing on, on a pretty large boat and we had to take it out of the water up in Stonington, Maine. And uh, it just happened that I was in desperate need of a haircut. And so I went downtown and looked around. There was no barber shop to be found. And I asked one of the locals uh, where I could get a, a haircut. And uh, they said, oh, Mel's, Mel's canoe shop. He, he builds wooden canoes, but he's got a barber chair in there too. So he went, uh, he goes and, and, and does all the town folks hair. And so I went in there and sure enough, there was this beautiful wooden canoe shop and, uh, um, and a barber chair right there amidst the sawdust. And so I sat down and I got myself a haircut and I went out and I was looking around the streets of Stonington. And sure enough, I looked just like every other local there in Stonington. Old Mel had one haircut and everybody in Stonington got it. We're all in the same boat right now. And uh, I just want you to remember that Christ is in the boat with us and loves us dearly and has all that we ever need. And so as we look around in our situation, remember that we are all together. We are all one in Christ. Can you pray with me for a minute? Heavenly Father, build in us a unity that transcends illness or pandemic or anything else. Fill us with your love and your hope. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Hello, friends. I am Pastor Madison Chelberg, and I serve as one of the pastors at St. Olaf Lutheran Church here in Austin. One of the things that has brought me comfort during this time is spending more time in prayer. I'm reminded of the time when Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane after his last supper on the night where he was betrayed. He knew what was coming, but still he went into this garden to pray. A God, of course, was listening, as God does, but I wonder what Jesus himself was feeling. He prays after throwing himself on the ground. Then he gets back up and perhaps takes a couple of deep breaths, regains his composure, and goes to find his disciples. He prays a few more times, and then when he's ready, he goes forth, getting ready for the events that are about to unfold. Just as I imagine it in the Garden of Gethsemane, God probably cried alongside Jesus because God did not want Jesus to suffer. The God we know through Jesus Christ does not desire the suffering of God's people. Rather, God weeps with those alongside those who suffer and longs for the world's healing and wholeness. God has compassion for all who grieve the loss of loved ones. God is with us and loves us always. Though our life now looks a lot more different than it did before the pandemic hit, we can still remember the love broken and poured out for us in the body and blood of Christ. We can still remember the greatest commandment that Jesus gives us, to love one another as God has loved us. We can still remember that God is with us and God loves us, always. People of God, in this uncertain time, remember these things that always remain certain, that God loves you and your faith community of Austin loves you. We are continually praying for you. Love being sent to all. 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 Love being sent to you.